All right, well, today's topic is for parents, and this one is actually probably our most popular video on the channel, so we figured that it was about time for an update. We're gonna talk about eight tips for parenting teens, and obviously, Tracy, we're gonna to have to go quickly through each one of these, so here's the first tip. Remember that you're the parent. Your teen is fighting for independence, but they need to earn it along the way. Yeah, this is the balance, parents, of where we want to be friends with our teenagers. We want to make connection with them and build trust with them, but we also still have to be the parent and lead them and shape them. And your kids need to know that you are the parent and they are the kid. Now, this reminds us, of course, of the fundamental law of parenting. Healthy parents transfer ownership of their kids' lives from parent to child through the ongoing process of maturity. So if you map it out, it looks like this. When those kids were babies, parents took most of the ownership. But as the child has grown up and moved into those teenage years, you've got to teach your teens, parents, that it's time for them to take ownership of their own lives. Yeah, so parents just realize that your goal as their parent is to lead them towards full independence, but they have to learn along the way. So you're training them to get to that place where they get to full ownership of their lives by the time they're 18, 19 years old. But they need to understand that you play an important role to get them to that point. And that leads to tip number two, that parents, you should lead with a plan. Transfer your values and establish goals for the family to lead toward those things. Yeah, so parents, this is where sometimes in parenting we can get lost in just the minutia and we're not really sure what to do. What are the values that you have? What do you wanna to transfer to you, your kids? What are some of the things you grew up with that really made an impact on your life? Maybe about always telling the truth or hard work, that you really look to put those values into your kids, that you train towards those things, you emphasize those things, that you, Come up with goals, like maybe we want to do um, an exercise routine every week to stay healthy physically, or maybe we each want to read a book every month. You know, whatever those goals are that you have of furthering and developing your kids, lead towards those things. Have a plan so you don't just get lost in life and just get overtaken by things. And as you do that, tip number three, you want to listen to your teens. You wanna have conversations, parents, not just lectures. You can learn a lot about your teens by simply listening to them. This is a really big tip, and I really hope parents that you're listening to this one, you need to listen to your teens. That's what all of our tools are about, that we create conversation starters so that you can then have conversations with your teenager where you're not just giving them information, lecturing them but that you ask questions and you're listening for what their heart is saying. The more you understand where your teenager is, the things they're struggling with, the things that scare them or confuse them, the better you'll be towards leading them, directing them on that path, right, towards independence, that fundamental law of parenting, but even just training towards values and goals. Your teenager needs to tell you what some of their goals are so you can help them to achieve them. Tip number four, Communicate clear expectations. Establish the teen's role in the home with chores, in relationship to siblings, and in the context of social time and your expectations for their social life. Yeah, if you wanna avoid unnecessary conflict with your teenager, you know, and again, there's this fight between they want more independence and you're trying to lead them towards that independence. Make sure you're really clear about the expectations. Make it clear, agree together. Talk to your teenager about, these are gonna be the rules. This is what your curfew is. This is what my expectation is of chores or what you give to the home life, right? If you have younger siblings in the home, if there are expectations of certain things about that, but be clear with your expectations so your teenager is on the same page with you so you're not reacting to something that they missed doing or didn't do that you wanted them to do because they didn't know it was an expectation of yours. Now this next tip may come as a surprise to parents of teens, but you still need to discipline when needed. You've gotta have a plan for when expectations aren't met or when rules are broken. Yeah, again, this is part of your training because your teenager is gonna leave your home or maybe even has a job while still living in your home. And the reality of the world is not you get to do whatever you want when you want. There's consequences when we make bad choices. So to train your kids to understand that when you break a rule, a, gr a rule that they're clearly are aware of and they have agreed to, if you break the rule, there's a consequence for that. And parents, you have to follow through on that consequence every time or it's not a teaching tool. It's not something that's helping to shape your teenager. It'll just create 
further confusion because then your teenager, if anything, will learn, well, I can manipulate the system or I'll get away with it because my parents aren't gonna follow through on, on the punishment anyway. So remember that discipline in love, discipline for a purpose is to shape your kids to understand there are consequences for bad choices. But as your kids grow older into those teenage years, you'll need to allow for self-expression. So that means you should choose your battles and allow your teens to express some individuality. You don't wanna just control their life. Remember, you're trying to transfer ownership of their life from you to them. This is just a great way of building a bridge with your teenager, that you don't micromanage everything, that if they like to wear a certain color, if they wanna add color to their hair, or if they have a piercing that they want, that within bounds that you guys can agree to as families, and I think there's a lot of subjectivity to that, but to give your teenager some freedom to say, this is something that I'm interested in, or I like how this look is, that you would give them some room to explore that, and to give them some room to express themselves that might look differently than you might want them to, but that's just a good way to build that bridge with your teenager that you recognize that they have interests, that they have things that they like, and you're giving them room to explore it. Tip number seven, make sure to set social media boundaries. You've gotta agree on which apps they can use, and make sure to check in on those apps regularly. Yeah, parents, in, in my opinion, what we've learned in experience and from talking with lots of parents out there, do not feel like your kids can have access to social media and it's none of your business what they're doing online. I'm sorry, I just feel like, especially for how young kids are getting smartphones and are on social media, you have to train them even in that. What's the appropriate way to interact on social media? What are things you post and you don't post? Helping them understand that future colleges and coaches and bosses can see anything that you put out there. So be very clear about what the apps are that your kids are using and check in on them. Parents, that's part of your job is to protect your kids. So even on social media, to be very aware of what your kids are doing. And our final tip for today is to teach your teen to earn trust. As they earn your trust, you reward them with more freedom. And this is something that's true in your relationship with them, but it's also a principle that's true in life in general. Yeah, and again, even like with social media, following the rules, following, you know, showing up on your curfew, all of those things that as your kid builds a track record of trustworthiness, of doing what you say, being obedient to your rules, then you reward them with more freedom. And the sooner your kids can learn that, that good choices lead to good consequences and avoid those bad choices, that trust is earned, which then helps you to build that relationship more and more with your teenager to be able to talk about some of those issues that are harder to talk about because you've established trust. Your teens know like you're for them, you're not against them. You're not trying to just control their life and make it miserable but that as your teenager follows the rules and does what you've asked them to do, that you reward them with freedom, and that will go a long way in just building a great relationship with your teenager. And again, this goes back to that fundamental law of parenting, that as they earn trust, as they become more responsible as they move on in their teenage years, you're allowing them to take more and more ownership of their own lives because they've earned it. So those are our eight tips for parenting teens. Use those questions down below to talk about this one. And parents, be sure to finish strong as you raise those teenage kids.